we will introduce the microbe and Riyadh teams, which have been put together, as uh, uh, Mike mentioned. Um, uh, so my name is Gisela, and I will introduce the microbe team, which stands for antimicrobial resistance, consumption, and uh, burden estimation. And then Cherry will um, take the lead on the um, drug resistant infections and disease di dynamics. Um, so the microbe team has a, um, a yes, it's led by, by Ben Copper and um, Christian Dolochek. And um, our flagship estimates are the bur global burden of antimicrobial resistance, um, which is um, estimated by a team based in Oxford, in which I will concentrate in this presentation, but it's really a team effort uh, from um, people uh, joining in the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluations and also in Australia and uh, Croatia. Um, and we have uh, Jessica Mendes joining next week. Our new, um, our, it, she will be our new West member. So um, Barney is uh, the one who, um, um, well, our senior communications <laughs> officer and public engagement officer. And uh, he's the one who keeps us uh, together in this effort, um, huge effort of collecting data, which is the yeah. cornerstone of, of our estimates. Um, it's it, the network of collaborators have grown massively in the past five years. So I remember this map being empty <laughs> in 2018. And now we have really collaborators in, uh, in all continents. Uh, our data comes from a huge variety of sources from vital registration, um, uh, laboratory results, antimicrobial uh, susceptibility tests, and um, yeah, literature studies as well. Um, um, data sets that allow us to um, understand the pharmaceutical sales and, sales and antimicrobial um, and uh, antibiotic use. Uh, so uh, our most recent um, member of the team that joined um, Ball is, uh, is here with us in the front row and he's been uh, tracking households that uh, use uh, antibiotics when their children have infectious uh, diseases such as restricted tract infections. Um, he's also uh, updating the consumption of antibacterials in uh, across 30 European countries and uh, national antimicrobial resistance data across 14 countries in Africa. Tilly, who is sitting in the middle row over there, uh, is looking at the uh, most recent um, IQVIA data, which is the largest source of information of pharmaceutical cells um, across countries. Some countries even request uh, official data from IQVIA uh, to, to have their own estimates of standard units, concentrations, variations uh, of all doses uh, of antimicrobials sold in uh, um, in the countries analyzed, and he's documenting all the findings and uh, estimating the anti um, antibiotic consumption. Uh, Freddie um, uh, is also helping uh, with all these estimations and um, pursuing the invasive non time tolerant salmonella resistance uh, estimates. Um, into the into a paper that will be uh, presented uh, very soon in um, in in a conference. And um, finally, um, um, I also um, uh, focus on the estimation of relative risk of resistant infections compared against both no infection. What would have happened if we didn't have um, any uh, resistant infection, but on or what would have happened if it if it was compared to a susceptible infection and the outcomes uh, in terms of mortality and length of stay for patients. Um, we disseminate our results in a global estimates, but also in regional estimates now published for um, 
Europe and Americas, and uh, we are in peer reviewing the Africa and East, Eastern Mediterranean results. So I now pass the um, microphone to Cherry. Thank you, Kisela. Um, so I'll bring you through some of the um, projects that we are working in in the Dryad group, Drought Resistant Infection and Disease Dynamic. And this is Ben's oak tree. <laughs> and we are acorns on the oak trees. <laughs> And this is just to give you a brief overview of the type of projects down the rows, the research areas that we are doing, and across the columns, the methods that we are using, and the ACONs take care of different projects. And I'll bring you through some of the examples under each of the research areas we are working on. So for AMR burdens, uh, the RUBAT project, which stands for rethinking how to understand the burden of antibiotic resistance bacteria, mm -hmm. um, is aims to look at the existing statistical approaches to estimate the burden of AMR and also look at the underlying assumptions of those methods. And one of the method, uh, one of the assumptions, sorry, that um is making is the coexistence of different strains of bacteria, and we are using uh, math models to look at the within host and between cohorts of host trans uh transmission dynamic of coexistence of different strains of bacteria, and we have uh been pre uh, contributing to the a mass uh, a mass application development. So this is a project with um Professor Direct in Mahino Oxford Research Unit in Bangkok. And the idea of the tool is to um, support the local hospitals to analyze their routinely collected hospital and uh, microbiology data so that AMR surveillance report can, auto, uh, can automatically generate it within the hospital. And uh, recently it was implemented in over 40, 40 hospitals in Thailand. Then the Fleming Fund has been um, investing on increasing the lab capacity, the microbiology lab capacity in all resource limited settings. And so the question that we're interested in next was whether or not maintaining the active microbiology lab services is cost effective and whether it's worth for the government to keep investing to maintain the services. So um, this is one of the analysis that we have done. And um, it's a project collaborating with the Menzies School of um, Health Research in Australia. Based on our model, it seems as very likely that uh, maintaining microbiology lab service is safe costs with safe costs and safe lives. So this um, the paper is um, in preparation. The manuscript of this is in preparation, and we just started a project trying to develop machine learning algorithms to optimize antibiotic prescription and reduce uh, resistance. And it's just started. We just got our ethics approval um, granted to collect data from tertiary hospital in Thailand, which we'll then use to build the model and then use another hospital data to do external validation. We've been working on the Edila project with St. George's Hospital. And um, in particular, we are um, leading on the component, looking at the antibiotic use in hospital, trying to quantify the impact of different antibiotic prescription strategies on patient outcome, as well as um, calculate the observed antibiotic use in the hospital and then compare that against to what would be expected of the antibiotic use given the distribution of the disease in the hospital, as well as the assumption that the hospital would adhere to what the WHO AWARE antibiotic guidebook says. And for the precise methods, Mio saying there I'll post out will be the best person to talk to. And um, the previous work by Moin, uh, she ran a regard via AP a uh, trial comparing the short duration antibiotic arm versus um, long antibiotic duration, more than eight days. The trial has is done, is completed, and the manuscript is under review. And at the same time, we also did a bit of modeling exercise to look at um, how 
reducing duration of antibiotic can impact the prevalence of AMR in hospital settings. And this project started in a group retreat um, event uh, a couple of years ago, back when we were all in Bangkok. And Renim, sitting in the middle, has just joined us a month ago, and she'll be leading this project looking at the within household and between household um, transmission dynamic of AMR using um, data from cluster randomized control trials from Burkina Faso and DR Congo. Sean, a project with um, Professor Paul Newton um, looking at sub substandard and falsified drugs. Um, and Sean will be leading on the analysis looking, quantifying the direct health impact of SF medicine. And also um, his paper look, looking, summarizing different possible mechanism of SF medicine on spray of MR was just um, published, actually very fresh, just yesterday. Um, and the Primavera project, which stands for predicting the impact of monoclonal antibodies and vaccines on AMR. And it's essentially the aim is to evaluate the effect of vaccine on reducing AMR. So we'll be building models and fit that into cost-effective analysis. And this is um, other examples of projects looking at emerging infections lead by Ben. Uh, where we're estimating the burden and dynamic of hospital acquired um COVID using acute hospital data in um from from the UK and the tech home message is um there's around one to two percent of people who are admitted to hospital will acquire um COVID who have have hospital acquired COVID um and in the second wave and that's before the vaccine implementation in the UK. And also you will be hearing um, a talk by Mark, um, our diffuse student just before lunch about his work on res uh, respiratory infection. And he'll be um, also using trial emulation to ask um, questions on treatment, uh, impact of treatment during um, outbreaks. And here are some of the direction, future directions. We'll be continuing working on um, MR modeling. And there will be a project um, now is pre preparing the proposal and well, it's about to submit, uh, collaborating with the UKHSA, looking at a hospital network model for MR. And there are a couple of um, projects that will be happening on relating to trial designs. And we are recruiting a postdoc to work on um, Lassa fever vaccine uh, with Professor Sarah Gilbert's group. So if if there's anyone interested potentially that you know, please spread the news for us. And there will be also collaboration with Aluvara from um, Professor My English group, looking at MR in neonates. And we are also hoping to work on genomic data and see how we can use leverage such data to support um, interventions to control the spread of AMR. Thank you.